Hello, my name is Christian Peitler. I'm a pediatric oncologist and researcher with a focus on ependymoma at the Hopp Children's Cancer Center in Heidelberg in Germany. And today I would like to raise awareness for this disease, for ependymoma, and to shortly talk about the molecular classification scheme of these tumors and its recent developments. Both diagnostics and treatment of ependymoma are associated with various challenges. While ependymoma research has more and more increased over the years, treatment options are still limited with surgery and radiotherapy being three pretty mainstays. Until recently, these tumors were classified and graded solely by morphological patterns. However, we and others found that grading does not accurately predict the clinical behavior. A radiotherapist who treated these tumors back in the 60s of the last century stated that treatment and outcome problems are most probably closely related to inconsistent tumor classification, already demonstrating the very long history of these challenges. Thus, there was an urgent need for a powerful clinical classification and stratification system. We aim to address these challenges by developing an unbiased, robust and uniform molecular classification of abnormal tumors that adequately reflects the full biological and clinical heterogeneity across all age groups and ependymoma histologies. By analyzing certain epigenetic profiles of tumor cells that are relatively stable throughout the course of disease and therefore particularly suitable for tumor classification purposes, we identified nine major molecular groups, three in every anatomic compartment, the spine, the posterior fossa, and the suprotentorial region. Every group has certain demographic characteristics that is, age groups or sex tumors are associated with, and specific genetic aberrations. Most importantly, we found that this classification outperforms the previous histology-based WHO classification system with regard to outcome prediction. Application of the classification in a clinical setting is expected to enable assessment of treatment efficacies in the context of specific molecular groups thereby refining current treatment approaches or allowing for implementation of novel targeted therapies in the future. However, in 2016, only one molecular group named suprotentorial ependymoma RELA fusion positive, according to the underlying driving fusion gene, made it into the WHO classification. The result of extensive joint efforts during the recent years is this new classification scheme that in contrast to the previous version will be fully integrated into the upcoming WHO classification 2021. Further research has led to identification of an additional unfortunately very aggressive spinal ependymoma group that now represents the 10th group. In addition, the biggest group of suprotentorial ependymoma has been renamed into suprotentorial ependymoma that FDA fusion positive as we better molecularly characterize the actual driving gene of these tumors. In summary, the molecular ependymoma classification will be an integral part of the new WHO classification and therefore of the routine diagnostic process, which is a huge achievement within the care of ependymoma patients. It is expected to shape clinical trials and treatment options and may support clinical decision-making. It will definitely be further refined in the future with new research and additional molecular workup. And it may also help to identify more subtile molecular alterations. I would like to take the opportunity of this important day to raise the awareness for ependymoma, but to also thank the CERN Foundation, our patients and their families, our funders and supporters, our teams, and collaboration partners. Only collaborative efforts led to this revolutionized classification and substantially boosted our understanding of ependymoma. So it's really fantastic to see how patients, families, care partners, and medical professions from all around the world dedicate May 10th in relation to the 10 molecular ependymoma groups as a pandemoma awareness day. And I'm really highly convinced that this will further increase public recognition and further support us in our joint quest against this disease. So with this, I would like to thank you for your support and thank you for joining today.